Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Now take a careful look at these two roses. Do you notice the difference? Which one would you think about picking and which one would you want to stay away from? If you said you'd pick the one without thorns, I would definitely agree with you. It looks like a small thing, but the thorns really do make a big difference. And wow, have I got a cool story for you today. Let's check it out. We're going to take a look at moths. You've probably never thought about it, but there are a lot of different kinds of moths. And don't worry, you don't need to remember all of them. Snow white and black peppered moths are what we want to focus on today. As you may guess, they have a lot of physical traits in common. Their bodies have a lot in common. They're both moths after all. Uh, you might ask what a physical trait is? Well, it's a characteristic about an animal's body. Now, let's take a look. They both have wings, a similarly shaped body, antennas. However, they look different because of their coloration. So, when moths think about their environment or where they want to live, they have to keep in mind where they will be resting. They have to choose a safe place so that they won't get eaten. One of the most common places for a moth to rest is on a tree. And now, here comes the interesting part. The snow white moths will survive very successfully by camouflaging, or blending in, into the tree covered in white moss. But try to imagine the black peppered moths on the same trees. They might not be so lucky just because they will be completely unable to blend into the white background. Well, predators would be happy enough though. They would be able to find black moths very easily. And then, dinner time! In other words, in an environment with trees covered in white moss, a black peppered moth will have a very difficult time surviving and reproducing. There will be no way for them to camouflage from predators. And eventually the black peppered moth will stop existing and die out. Well, that'd be sad. But the white moths will have no problem at all surviving reproducing, and continuing on in the animal kingdom. And you might be thinking, who, lucky moths? But it is not luck. It's a characteristic that the snow white moth has inherited to help them survive. And moths are not the only ones with super survival skills. Let's imagine a deer. Male deers, called bucks, have antlers. Well, nothing by chance happens in nature. These antlers will protect them and allow them to fight with other bucks. And try to guess why? A female. When an older buck competes with a younger buck, the one that is stronger and has the best set of antlers will be the winner. This is true because the bigger a buck's antlers are, the farther they reach. What a useful trait that is. A buck can harm the other without getting too close or risk getting harmed themselves. Big antlers also mean big strength. A buck can easily win against its competitor, and the prize is worth it. Whichever buck wins the fight will win the attention of the female deer and be able to reproduce to make their young. But bucks are not the only males that compete for a female's attention. Peacocks have traits that allow them to do this as well. A male peacock's feathers are colorful and big. A female's feathers are very dull and small. So males with bigger and more colorful feathers will easily find a female mate. In fact, many times, male peacocks will compete the same way that bucks do. But instead of fighting with antlers, they do a silly feather shaking dance to show who has the better colors. And if you're wondering why colors and length of feathers matter to a female, here's the answer. Mothers want to pass the strongest traits onto their babies. That way, their young will have a better chance at survival. For peacocks, beautiful feathers are part of survival. Now, I know we've been talking about animal traits and how they have small differences that really make a big difference to how successful they are, but the same is true for plants as well. Remember how the story started today? Roses, exactly. The lengths on the thorns of roses. These thorns will determine the rose's ability to survive and get the roses to have baby flowers. The longer the thorns are on a rose bush, the harder it is for a predator to hurt the flowers and the rose bush. 
So in general, the roses with longer thorns will survive and reproduce better than the rose bushes with smaller thorns. And you may ask, well, what about flower petals? The brighter the color of a flower petal is, the more attention it's going to receive from bees and other insects. This is great because these insects need to pollinate the flower and spread their pollination to other plants. That is how flowers ensure their seed babies will grow big and strong. They need to attract those bees. Now that we've looked at animal and plant traits and the little differences in the same type of plant and animal, we see how small changes in an animal's traits make a big difference. Like the way an animal camouflages, the size of an animal's antlers, the size and color of feathers, the thorns on a plant, or even the color of the petals of a plant. Next time you're outside, see if you can spot a bee pollinating a flower or another plant, and take notice of which flower the bee chooses. You can also think about which flower you choose to pick. And now you know why. <laughs>